Greetings, everyone. Father Jim here. Hope you're doing well on this Saturday, and it is the 20th day of April. I'll be reading from both of our readings from our liturgy today. They're such beautiful readings as we, first of all, continue through the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, beginning with verse 31. The church throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria was at peace. She was being built up and walked in the fear of the Lord. And with the consolation of the Holy Spirit, she grew in numbers. As Peter was passing through every region, he went down to the Holy Ones living in Lydda. There he found a man named Aeneas, who had been confined to bed for eight years, for he was paralyzed. Peter said to him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ heals you. Get up, make your bed. He got up at once, and all the inhabitants of Lydia and Sharon saw him, and they turned to the Lord. Now in Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha, which translated is Dorcas. She was completely occupied with good deeds and almsgiving. Now during those days, she fell sick and died. So after washing her, they laid her out in a room upstairs. Since Lydia was near Joppa, the disciples, hearing that Peter was there, sent two men to him with the request, please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. When he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs where all the widows came to him weeping and showing him the tunics and cloaks that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter sent them all out and knelt down and prayed. Then he turned to her body and said, Tabitha, rise up. She opened her eyes, saw Peter and sat up. He gave her his hand and raised her up. And when he had called the holy ones and the widows, he presented her alive. This became known all over Joppa and many came to believe in the Lord. Our gospel today continues the sixth chapter of St. John, beginning with verse 60. Many of the disciples of Jesus who were listening said, This saying is hard. Who can accept it? Since Jesus knew that his disciples were murmuring about this, he said to them, Does this shock you? What if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life while the flesh is of no avail. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life, but there are some of you who do not believe. Jesus knew from the beginning the ones who would not believe and the one who would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by my Father. As a result of this, many of his disciples returned to their former way of life, no longer walked with him. Jesus then said to the twelve, Do you also want to leave? Simon Peter answered him, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. Well, it is hard to imagine followers of Jesus turning their backs on him and walking away from his tutelage, indeed departing from life itself. Yet this is where today's gospel picks up. In response to Jesus' instruction to eat his flesh, to drink his blood, just a few verses before today's passage, many of the disciples mutter, This saying is hard. Who can accept it? In contrast to these nameless disciples, the twelve appointed men, led by Peter, recommit themselves to Jesus in this moment. Instead of lamenting Jesus' seemingly impossible mandate, Peter declares, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. We know well the story of this Peter. Throughout the Gospels, he gets things right and then horribly wrong. He acts boldly with faith and then with doubt and betrayal. Indeed, his disciples, his discipleship is characterized by his capriciousness until he receives the Holy Spirit. Jesus gave the Holy Spirit to the disciples following his resurrection, and from there the church was born. And what a vibrant, life-altering faith we see in this early church. Turning back to that first reading, it tells of a church at peace being built up through what the author Luke calls the consolation of the Holy Spirit. And there are miracles. Tabitha, whom Luke describes as completely occupied with good deeds and almsgiving, dies and is brought back to life by Peter. Even before that, Peter took pity on a man named Aeneas 
who had been paralyzed and bedridden for eight years. All of these things Peter did because of the Holy Spirit, the presence and power of God at work inside him. God is not bound by our limitations, only we are. We can take courage amid our own faltering, for like Peter and the members of that early church, we do have that same Holy Spirit. He leads us to the Son and the Father, and what a gift that is. Whereas Peter says to the Lord, Master, whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Where can we go? In this crazy world we live in, there's only one place we can go. We know who he is. It's Jesus. So let's continue to put our trust, our faith, and all our hope in our loving Lord as we continue to celebrate these, these Easter days. Hope your weekend's going well so far. Enjoy your Saturday. Make sure you get to Mass this weekend as well. God bless you and take care.